Hello, Roxanne. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for inviting me to uh, be interviewed, I guess. My first official interview is quite exciting. Yeah, I'm just really interested in your journey. So my first question is, what exactly made you want to become a filmmaker? So what made me want to be a filmmaker? Um, well, to be honest, I'm still not exactly sure what part of filmmaking I want to be, I want to do. So I've mentioned um, before about like winning an Oscar for Best Director and things like that. But I kind of at this moment in time, I kind of just like doing it all. So I guess, yeah, filmmaker is the um, general term for it because I really enjoy, you know, learning about the videography, like the cinematography side of it, the storytelling. So I guess that's kind of like writing, um, the editing I absolutely love. And yeah, until now, I haven't really had to direct anyone. Um, but what made me interested in like filmmaking in general is kind of like last year, I think in maybe October or November, I had a conversation with one of my teacher friends. So I am also a teacher. And I asked her like, what would you do if you weren't teaching? She said, you know, like she literally can't imagine doing anything else other than teaching like that's the only thing she can imagine herself doing and I just thought like wow okay I can imagine myself doing 500 different things and it's not because I don't like teaching I, d I do like teaching and you know I have no trouble admitting that I am or saying that I am good at my job um, but it's just not like my my true true passion in life it's something that I do that I don't hate and it pays the bills but I definitely know there are like 500 other things that I would also enjoy doing. So that day I went home and I took an online ikigai test which is like this Japanese concept of, of life essentially of finding like your purpose in life and it's something like what you're good at combined with what you can get paid for, um, what the world needs and another fourth concept which I forgot but it's a combination of all of these and this ikigai test essentially said that I should be like an actor um you know like an audio and visual editor or something like this and I thought okay well that's essentially filmmaking and yeah I just decided okay now I'm gonna be a filmmaker and win an Oscar ah <laughs> oh, that's a really good story I love that so my next question is why YouTube? Like, why are you making all these videos on YouTube and not just being a filmmaker as it is? Yes, there are there are loads of obviously loads of filmmakers, directors, everything who you know don't have YouTube channels, and I thought I would make a YouTube channel about this um, journey and just sort of like document my process, document my journey of becoming an Oscar women winning film director or. Um, you know essentially becoming a youtuber or whatever it is that I'm going to end up becoming and this idea kind of comes from Gary Vaynerchuk and he always says you know just like document don't create and um, like document your journey and, and so on and similar to him he wants to buy the New York Jets but he's not that bothered about actually owning the New York Jets it's just all about the process for him and that's the same thing that's the same thing for me is I don't you know, I don't really care if I become an award-winning film director, but I just want to, like, do this journey and at least try and document it, because I think if I am successful in the end, it will be really cool to have something to look back on. And also the second reason is that I am, you know, really into, like, social media. I love Instagram. I love YouTube. I consume it so much. And I am a teacher, so I thought, well, I could combine that and teach other people about social media, about filmmaking, you know, the basics, about YouTube and so on. And it's just a really good way for me to kind of revise what I have already learned and just to help like other beginners move forward with their journey too. That's awesome. So who would you say is your biggest inspiration? Lots of people inspire me. Um, on YouTube, I guess my biggest inspiration is uh, Peter McKinnon because, you know, 
well, it's Peter McKinnon, he's just a legend. Um, I don't really need to explain that. But also like his his friend Matty Hapuja, um, uh, Peter Wallbeck, I think. Wall back, yeah. Um, just like, you know, that sort of gang. <laughs> They're not really a gang, but I think if you follow one of them, you will follow like 10 of the others. Um, so yeah, they are all like really big inspirations. And then recently I have like been desperately seeking out other female creators, um, like filmmakers and so on, because they are just so underrepresented on this platform. You know, there are hundreds of like Peter McKinnon style um, men <laughs> which is you know that's okay I'm not saying there shouldn't be so many men doing this but there just are more men in this industry and so recently I found um, well I think it's been like a few months now I found this woman called Alex Gassaway and I absolutely love her channel she sort of makes films like short films or not really vlogs but they're kind of like um documentary style short films i'd say so she will choose a topic and you know make a video around that and yeah i really love her channel there are some other female creators but you know honestly i'm really bad with names so i can't remember them all um but yeah from youtube those are kind of like my main inspirations pretty much anyone i'm subscribed to you can see on my um subscribed channel list I don't hide it so you can see who I'm subscribed to and pretty much anyone there inspires me in some way or another. Off YouTube one of my favourite like directors or I think he does screenwriting as well and he does a bit of everything is Edgar Wright and um yeah I just really really love his films like um uh the one with the seven evil exes Scott Pilgrim versus the world that is such a good movie because it's, you know, just the storyline is great, it's based off this comic, everything like that is great. But honestly, I've watched it like 10 times and each time I find like a new, a new sneaky transition he's thrown in there and stuff. And yeah, so he really inspires me. And also, um, I absolutely love Quentin Tarantino movies, of course. Um, but not really so much of an inspiration. I just think I like his movies. It's more people on YouTube, to be honest, who inspire me because I feel like they're more just like ordinary people who aren't so well connected in like the film industry in Hollywood. They're just people who started like me filming in their bedroom. Yeah, I totally understand that. Now you've mentioned a few times about an Oscar. Do you actually think you're gonna win? <laughs> Will I win an Oscar? The thing is, obviously somebody wins an Oscar, right? And all of those people were once a beginner filmmaker. So I don't want to say that I don't think I'll ever actually win an Oscar, but you know, I don't think it's, um, it's very likely, but it could happen. Okay. And part of the reason why I, I go around telling people like, oh, I'm going to win an Oscar for best director is because it's sort of a way to keep me accountable and for me to like manifest doing this, like continuing this journey. So honestly, if I was able to like make a full length feature movie one day, I think that would be like good enough for me. And then if I did that, I would, you know, try and get um, streamed or screened even at a film festival and, and make it onto like the awards circuit, whatever it is. I don't honestly, I don't know how any of it works. Um, so it's just kind of this ridiculous thing that I say like, you know, I'm going to be president one day or, you know, I'm going to win an Oscar one day because if I do and I have this whole YouTube channel to look back on, that's going to be an, like an amazing um, documentary in itself. Also another um, big reason why I want to win an Oscar for best director, if I even become a director, I don't know. Um, it's because if I did that, I would be the second female to ever win that award. And like I said before, I'm struggling to find like, you know, successful filmmakers um, that are female in, in this sort of industry. And I think that's just crazy. Like it's nuts that, I don't know, there's been a hundred years of Oscars more or less and only one woman has ever won Best Director and, you know, it's 2020, that is not okay. Also, like, the woman who did win Best Director, Catherine Bigelow for The Hurt Locker, I think it was in uh, 2003, maybe? 
when she won, I just watched her accepting acceptance speech a few weeks ago, and she didn't even like mention the fact that she was the first female to win. And I was kind of not disappointed, but I was just a bit like, why didn't she say something? And obviously, I guess if you like speak out about these things, you might get shunned by the industry. But as you can tell, I talk a lot. I'm very outspoken. I don't really care what people think. So I think if I won an Oscar, I would just go all out with my speech. I've even kind of like planned some things that I would say at my acceptance speech. Just go all out and probably I would get banned from the Academy. But, you know, who cares? At least I've said what I need to say. And um, yeah, that would be a really, really great feeling uh, to win. Like probably the biggest award in, in the film industry. But honestly, I'm not that bothered by winning the award, but I think the journey to that point would be absolutely incredible. And that's why I'm documenting all of this in case I do win. That's amazing. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for um, inviting me on to be interviewed and um, good luck with your magazine. Okay guys, so that was an interview with a future Best Director Oscar winner. Um, that was super awkward because I was literally just talking to the distance to nobody. Um, in case you couldn't tell, that was just my own voice interviewing me because nobody's here and, you know, don't have any friends. But um, this was part of the 30 day film school challenge, um, day 24 for honestly I forgot what day we're on. Um, the light was going on and off there because it's kind of evening time and the sun is setting and I'm just using that wonderful natural light. Um, Dee for Darius was like use light if you need to, use a microphone so hopefully the sound was good. Oh, it's gone off again. Right let's readjust the exposure. There we go. Okay, so the light is terrible. I need to figure it out. I'm not going to buy lights until I go back home to Indonesia, which might be in September. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I've lost what I'm saying, so I'm just going to keep talking and hope that you click the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment below. What do you think about my interview, my fake interview? Do you think I'll win an Oscar? That would be really funny if I actually won an Oscar one day. Like imagine if I won an Oscar for best director in like, I don't know, 15 years. How, how long does it take to get good at this? I don't know. But imagine if I did that and then you were like, oh yeah, I watched her on YouTube. I was like one of her first 37 subscribers. You know, I'd give you a shout out at the Oscars. I'd be like, yo, come to the after party. Mm. Click subscribe. See you. Bye.